What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo. And joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. As you can tell by my, 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 I don't know, my, my gesture, I don't know, my mood. We, you know, we're going to talk about this movie that I was, I wasn't forced to watch, but I was told and asked to watch this movie because we needed to talk about it. So, Brian, I, I gave it a shot. What was fascinating to me is that I was watching this scene and I had to step away. I had to put my kid to sleep. I had a conversation with my wife real quick. And then I came back. I was still able to catch the end of that scene, Brian. <laughs> I just, Brian, there was just... Brian, I've never not cared about anything in my life. It's like watching the the guy in fifth place swim up to the, 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 the finish line, Brian. Who came in sixth? Brian, I did not care about it's like you were like you you was trying to get that emotion and it's like man <laughs> whatever you trying to sell me I can't I can't buy it and I had to sit through it's like sitting at those resorts and trying to knowing you're gonna say no but <laughs> you gotta listen through the to through the pitch this was a tough watch Brian and then and there's nothing original really about this guy. It's like, I thought I was watching Superman again. I thought I was watching Justice League again. I didn't know what I was watching. I, I did not give a damn whatsoever about what I was watching, Brian, your thoughts. Rebel Moon part two, aptly named the scar giver. I think you and I will bear the scars <laughs> watching this movie till the day I die. And I asked the question, if a rebel moon is destroyed in the forest of the universe, did it really happen? <laughs> um, listen, somehow this movie was critically more reviled than part one, which is saying something. It's slightly better, maybe slightly how though i don't know how it's a little i don't know i don't know how you found found i don't know how you find slightly from horrible like yeah like, no, like, it's horrible this is, yeah like, this, you know what yeah, i'm saying no, like, totally this is, this is, this is yeah we're, we're we're in the landfill right so it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> you pick you pick your trash but it's all still garbage right so, <laughs> but i i think your point about originality is the key one there just are so many individual scenes that are pulled from clearly things that Zack Snyder genuinely has liked and loved as a as a consumer of comics and TV and movies. And they are shot like with over drama, melodrama, with the idea to, you know, play the strings of your heart. And it just leaves you cold every time. Like so, you you talked about some of the the influences. I just talk about more of the the type. Part two to me was more about the types of scenes. It kind of was like, okay, we've got to have our lead fall in love for the lightest and shallowest of reasons and sleep with someone. So we got that because that then makes us, in theory, care more about this guy who's probably about to get killed or something bad is about to happen to him. We get the. We get the training montage of the non-soldiers who miraculously in two days become like guerrilla fighters to take out this incoming army. We get, we get a two-minute scene of them picking grain, like wheat and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. They literally they do this in The Magnificent Seven, except they do it over like eight weeks. Like they yeah. teach the farmers how to shoot. They teach them how to use their machetes. They build walls within the village. Like, it's literally the same thing, just not nearly as credible or as interesting. Listen, if you like this movie, you... I have to question your taste in movies. I have to. I have to. I have to question it. And I have to say, what other movies have you seen that you like, that you, that you thought were fantastic movies? You know what I'm saying? Because come on, man. This is like, you know what's not... Brian, do you know was trying to watch this movie and not caring about a single second or frame of this movie, Brian? You don't care about any of the leads. 
There's no emotional attachment to any of the leads, Cora included. It, it was also funny because I completely forgot about the blood axis until they miraculously appeared at the end. I was like, oh, oh. that's right. The brother sister, <laughs> like, it's like, man, Ray, Ray Fisher went before his time in part one. And then, oh, his sister shows up to save the day. I'm like, man, why didn't I totally forgot with all the exposition <laughs> and random <laughs> vignette. Like, that was the other thing. Part one was so bad because of all the exposition and flashback. Part two, we literally got a vignette for every character who was sitting around that dinner table. And to me, the whole time, I'm like, it was, well, this is an indictment of your storytelling sharing. that you need to take this this sharing time. time. Yeah, show and tell. And it was, <laughs> it's weird. Like when everybody's telling their story and then there's one person like, I have a story. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't care, yo. It's like hearing these people's stories and then going back to the flashbacks is just like, Brian, there's no, there's, it's just, this movie is just a waste of time. And I'm sorry for anyone who had to sit through this movie, but um, <laughs> Zack Snyder should just give it up. Oh, but he's not <laughs> because we're, know. we're getting we're getting the we're getting the R-rated double length features of these part twos, and he's saying he's already got part three written. He wants to make six of these. I will unsubscribe <laughs> to Netflix if they do this, yo, because I, I know that my money is being thrown away. <laughs> How can you allow atrocities? Rebel Moon. Come on, man. I will. I will. Ugh. Rebel Moon Six. That's like, like that's, that's gonna like make me want like Police Academy Six. <laughs> I'm think of like what's what other the six? I was watching Police Academy too. <laughs> classic. So, oh my goodness, I thought actually so interesting. If we get into the technicals of this, because there is a lot of action once they kind of get to the battle. But weirdly, I thought, I don't know what you thought. I, I thought this was one was more devoid of Snyder's talent. I, I actually thought the first part of this had a few more sequences that were better. Like I thought Ray Fisher's death scene in part one is a pretty fun run just for what it is. Like take off the story, just watching it staged and shot. I thought like there's a scene that Cora has in part one with the way she handles the gun. That's actually pretty cool. Part two didn't really have that. Like, I don't, rem I didn't remember as I was watching, it, I was like, I don't see the Zack Snyder, like visual flair scene that I usually can count on. It's like a lot of slow-mo and a lot of lighting and a lot of- I didn't see the skill yeah. in none of these fights. No. They were just doing, it was just mindless action. There was no, choreography it looked like brian yeah it was flat it was like very very overproduced and edited but it just yeah I, I was surprised that actually genuinely surprised me i kept waiting for a couple of these sequences where i was just like oh i know he's gonna give me two minutes of action that's like really just cool and like and no matter how bad the story is it'll be fun i didn't really feel like i got that in this one i'm just over his it's like you were very good initially with your cinematography and now your cinematography hasn't really evolved. Yeah. It's just the same aesthetic with different stuff in it. I'm over it. I also love, I mean, I know interviewers, as the, when they go on the press circuit, they kind of have to, you know, they have to make nice. And I just love like he's sitting down for the interview and the interviewer is like, oh, I saw the movie. I loved it. I loved it. I'm like, I would just be like, come on. <laughs> I know you did. I know you didn't love it. Like. I, it's, it's, uh, like if Zach asked me, how did you? What did you think about Rebel Moon? I said, Rebel Moon, man, I can't sit through it. I'll be, I'll try to be nice about it. I'm not gonna be like, yo, your movie was trash. But I'm gonna be like, yo, I, it's just not my type of movie, but uh, 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 Zach, I've seen all everything that in your movies. That's like the, that's like an uh, homage to the past twenty years of movies, and there was no originality to it. Also, uh, it, uh, you failed to see, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> if if I if I don't get the genius of Rebel Moon Part One and Two, then I submit that ignorance is truly bliss. Yeah. So I'll stay. I'll stay not knowing. But people, oh, this well. thing also was less of an event too. So it was technically number one on Netflix for twenty four hours, but it it didn't. It that's it was held that spot for a day, and it was quickly shuffled down the top ten list of what people were watching. So I, was I know to do the top ten. I know he claims that part one was the most watched thing in the world last year. And it, may, it would have made a bajillion dollars. But yes, part two, I can't wait to hear his spin on how wildly successful it was because it clearly was less successful than part one in terms of people showing up to watch it. It's interesting, Brian, to sort of listen to his logic. To and uh, the logic and the res his response towards the criticism of this movie because how do you defend this movie? It's like, sure, you do these movies for you because he said it before. I've seen him say he I do these movies for me. Yeah, it shows. I don't do them for you. If you don't happen to like it, that's your problem. It's not the movie was made for you. It was made because I wanted to make it. That's his approach. <laughs> and people are giving him money to give to, to because he has fans that like his stuff. Really? Put out a movie in the theaters and let's see what's up. What's his next movie in the theaters? I don't know. I don't. Because he's stuck he on the next six, four movies of Rebel Moon, so he can't be coming out with another movie. I don't think he. I don't think he will. I don't think he'll be given those opportunities. Streaming is the right. And I don't. And, but it's, it's it's amazing to me that Netflix is is sticking with him, and, and like, yo, this can't be bringing you subscribers. It, that's what the that's what they're in the business no, for, Brian, it, yeah. aren't they? I get it. Yeah, they, they you want eyeballs. You can't be give, You can't. Are you borrowing banks' money to give to this dude? Because you know what I'm saying. Are you getting? Are you taking this money and giving it to him to make horrible movies? Is that what we're doing, <laughs> Harry? <laughs> I don't know, Brian. It's just like yo. Give me twenty mil. I'll make him. I'll try to make a movie. But giving this dude to make, giving this dude nine figures to make this, how sway? Can't wait for that sucker punch. Uh, oh my god! Cut. It's like yo, this yo. You ever had to walk away, Brian, from a conversation because you can I, I can't. I can't talk about this no more. Sure, we all have, yeah. This is, yo, know, like if I was in the room with Zach and he's talking to me about suck, giving me money, I'd be like, yo, Zach, get out of here, yo. Security and watch. I'm going to put the scene of, of, of Beverly Hickok's woman and throw him out the, the, the window. Because <laughs> this is ridiculous, yo. This is just, this is just ridiculous. Let us know in the conversation below. What'd you if give it? You, What'd you give it? Well, Ah, man, I couldn't even, I, Brian, I don't have the brain capacity to even try to think about a number for this. <laughs> so this is zero. Wow. Okay. This is a zero for wasting my time, for giving us stuff that you've already given to us and trying to play it off as new. Trying to tell me that this is Star Wars inspired, which is not. This is garbage. What number do you give it? I was going to give it a one. I don't really have a particular science to it, but I, I don't know that it's the the absolute worst thing that I've ever seen. It's 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 in the bottom. It's in the bottom shelf. But I gotta I give it a zero, Brian, because of the expectation that you have set upon yourself because of what you've done in the past. Because of what you've done in the past and you've given us good stuff before, this is not good. That's why you get a zero, yo. Because this is not your first time out. This is not your first, you know, let's see how he does. No, 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 no. You have experienced, filmmaker. Do you, do you think he sends a Christmas card to Carl Rinch? Who's Carl Rinch? That's the 47 Ronin guy who they wrote that story about. <laughs> 
taking Netflix money and lighting it on fire with like drugs and all that sort of stuff. He probably called him <laughs> first before he went to Zach's like, at least I'm not that guy. <laughs> Word up. You can see her ever move where all your money is gone. <laughs> He's like, I not only gave you two, I got six of these. Wait. <laughs> oh my goodness. At least probably if it's still in crypto, you still have some money. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. This is getting ridiculous, man, because it's like I don't know how you like this movie, yo. I don't I'm sorry. I don't know how you like it. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time on another Gen Report. I don't care really if you comment on this at all, really. <laughs> really, don't even comment, because I don't care. That's why he cuts the top. The show goes on! Yeah!